Hi, I'm Stephen Roach. I'm here to try and answer your six and a half questions. But I was the, the, the Wall Street outsider with a, uh, a reasonably high profile uh, in the international arena and somebody who gave them straight advice that was uh, to borrow uh, uh, Deng Xiaoping's um, mantra was fact-based, it was analytically driven, it was not uh, shaped by ideology. They liked that, they trusted that, uh, and they've allowed me to bring that into their policy debate, and I've had a number of opportunities to meet with very senior officials, you know, from the Premier, uh, even at some points uh, with the President of China, uh, on down to uh, to offer my point of view. Is it, is it ever implemented? Absolutely not. But is it part of their policy debate, the fabric of their discussions? Yeah. Yeah, China really has changed my life, there, there's no question about it. But the problem with us in the West is we always see China the way we see ourselves. So when we examine you know, the Chinese mystique, we're, we're really raising more questions about ourselves than we are in appreciating what's unique and different about the Chinese perspective. And that liberated me because I realized that so much of what we read, and, and you just pick up the newspaper on any given day these days, you know, about, uh, you know, you know Chinese corruption, uh, or you know, uh, Chinese leaders, uh, uh, or um, you know, most recently about Chinese art forgeries. It's all written from our point of view. We have a you know strong uh, uh, and biased misperception of what the Chinese are trying to do to develop their economy, uh, and uh, you know, I, I think um, to try to develop a perspective from a non-Western point of view is hugely challenging for a Western-trained uh, economist uh, like myself, but, but I really try to do that every day. You know, in, in, in the West, we pride ourselves um, in you know, our core values of um, democracy, um, capitalism, the invisible hand of uh, Adam, Adam Smith. Uh, we're taught at an early age that anything that is socialist or communist uh, is bad. And, you know, the, China tries to take an, an ideological, uh, ideologically centered value system and yet do it with its own unique set of Chinese characteristics uh, and you know, create a different approach. And I think. It's up to us to develop an appreciation uh, for that approach as well. China's going to change from day to night. I mean, you know, the, the, this is a, a country that uh, has taken uh, the producer model to a, a level in terms of driving economic development <coughs> better than any developing uh, uh, country has done in recorded history. But guess what? You know, it's, it's a model that is now tired and created some stresses and strains, and so they have to reinvent themselves into more of a balanced uh, consumer-led model. And so I think, you know, when we come back and do your six and a half questions <laughs> ten years from now, uh, we'll see a very different uh, China than the, the one we see today. Work hard, sleep very little. I think sleep is overrated. You don't do much. You sort of are horizontal, uh, and you're wasting your time. And so, you know, my advice to all of you young people out there watching is: don't waste your time. You don't have a lot of time uh, on this planet. The one other um, area of study that I was really good at uh, as an undergrad uh, it was art history. And at one point, maybe halfway through my PhD program in econ, I thought of uh, dropping out and 
try to get a PhD in art history, but I chickened out. One person, dead or alive, uh, Deng Xiaoping. <laughs>